Hey guys, welcome back to another online lesson. Today we're going to be looking at a more formal way of finding the critical path analysis. Uh, we're going to be using what we call a forward pass and backward pass method. Um, but first I'm just going to go through a quick recap of what a critical path analysis is and what you need for achieved. So the three things that we need for achieved is we need from a precedence table, draw the activity network, put on the duration of each activity, and find a critical path. So we can do that using the informal way, like shown in the other videos, um, by simply drawing the uh, activity network, putting the durations on it, and finding by trial and error, uh, or just by looking at it kind of to find the longest path. Um, um, but the reason we're gonna look at it in a more formal way is that we're going to be able to use this forward pass and backward pass method to answer our more merit and excellent style questions. Okay, let's keep going and recap what a critical path is. Now, a critical path gives us the activities that must be completed on time for the project to be completed on time. <laughs> it's the path that holds everything up if, ev if it is delayed. If anything's delayed within that critical path, it's going to delay the whole project. So that's the critical path, hence why it's called critical. Um, and it's the longest time that and the critical path is the longest one that takes the longest time, not the shortest time. Um, so that's the example of the bus. Um, if everyone's not there and you're late, uh, we can't leave until that late person arrives. Okay, so this is an activity network we've done before. You may have copied it down from the last um, video or the last lesson and you've probably already added the duration duration being on the side here and so this is just the activity network that I had from the other day and I've just added the boxes on top so I've got two boxes one the blue being for the forward pass and the green being for the backwards pass um, okay so let's just have a look at how we use the forward pass method to find the critical path so I've got zero on my first one and I've got five because I've added the activity of duration five days and then the next one so then let's continue to have a look at B um, if you add three days onto this one, it would simply just become eight days. And for this node here, if you just simply add four onto five, it would become nine days there. Uh, and let's have a look at C. If you go along here, you went straight here, five plus five is 10. So that would be 10 days there. However, now you need to be careful because with these next two nodes, we've got two different paths coming to it. We've got to figure out what do we put in there. So what we need to do and it's really important is that we put the longest path in there, the longest amount of days in there, because we're trying to find the critical path, which is the longest path for all of it. So the first blue box one is going to show us the critical path and going to show us the longest path. So for example, with this one, if we were to follow this through, we have five plus three is eight plus five would be 13. And if we follow this one through, we'd have five plus five plus four, which is 14. So we won't use 13, we'll use 14 there for this node. And let's have a look at this one here. If we were to go through the middle, we'd have 5 plus 5 is plus 7 is 17. But if we went down the bottom, it'd be 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 6 is 15. So it's not going to be 15, it's going to be 17. And that's probably where people make the biggest mistake uh, when they're drawing out their forward pass and, and backwards pass. They don't see that the other path is longer or they put the shortest one in there because they think ASAP time, shortest. No, it's the longest time. All right, and same deal with this one. If we add three to 17, we'll get 20. But if we add four to 14, we'd only get 18. So we need to make sure we put the 20 in there. And then the last one only has one activity coming to it. So we know it's got 24. So that we, so now we know that the critical path is going to be 24. And it's going to take us 24 days. And then you can figure out what it's going to be by going through the backwards pass, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but let's have a look at what the answer says. So let's see that we went through and did it correctly. Like I said, when you get to a box that has more than one branch leading to it, you need to put the longest time in the box. I can't stress that enough. That needs to be the longest time. So with that top one, we had 13, 14, so it's 14. With the bottom one, we put 17 in. So the ASAP time in total of this activity is, can be completed is 24 days. Awesome. So I'm going to leave this one here for you guys to have a practice of. Pause the video, draw your activity network, and 
put the durations in and find the activity, uh, find the ASAP time, sorry. So, and then the answer is this. So this is what your activity network should look similar to in some form or way. And then you've gone through with your um, original node, starting with zero, adding A is one, adding uh, to G is two, but that's just three. So obviously this way was longer. So going B to D took six days. So they put six in there and then one here, three is four. So this must've been the longest way, plus five to this is nine, which is not the longest. So we've had to add here this way so B D down to H is made to 11 plus 3 is 14 so we can see that the ASAP time is 14 days awesome so now let's have a look at backwards pass to find out how late you can start an activity and see and still have the event finish on time so backwards pass is as late as possible so that as the when the activity is completed or the duration of the activity has has to be finished by this time no later time otherwise it'll just start to affect the critical path so tell us it tells us how late you can start an activity but still finish at the event in time so we work backwards from the sync node and we subtract the times of each activity and we put this in the second box so yellow is what they use but i use green uh, so let's go ahead and do that to our one um, this time though if we have two calculations, we need to take the smallest one. So if we've got a node that has two different paths coming to it or two different activities coming to it, we need to take the smallest one. And we should we should get back to zero when we get back. Otherwise, we know we've probably made a mistake somewhere. All right, so if we had to start here, we just put 24 in and then we're working backwards. So to get to this one, we'd have 24 minus four. So that will be 20 as well. And then going back to this one, Going backwards only has one, so we just have uh, 20 minus four, which is 16. And going backwards to this one only has one, so this one is just 20 minus three, which is 17. And let's head along this path, F's path. If we were to go back down as fast, um, we'd have 17 minus six, which is 11. And then if we were to continue this way, um, because this one only has one activity coming to it, we have um, we have 11 minus 4, so 11 minus 4 becomes 7, uh, and then would continue on and take away 5, which would be 2. Um, I'm just going to leave 2 there for now, just because we followed that bottom path along. But it would most likely change because the these nodes would take us down further and hopefully to zero. So let's continue from here. This node here, if we went to this one in here. If we were to follow along this one, we'd get 12. But if we were to follow along this one, we'd get 10. So we need to not take 12. Because we're going backwards this time, we're taking the shortest. So this will become 10. And then if you were to follow this path along, we'd have 10 minus 5. So that would become 5 to this one. So we need to get rid of that. And then this would become 0, which is what we wanted. Now we still haven't completed in this one. And we still haven't checked if this one becomes less if we were to go this way. So Checking from this node here, going backwards, we only have one leading to it. So it'll just be 16 minus five, which is 11. And then we got uh, leading to this one, we got minus three, which is higher than um, five. So we just leave it as five. And then we've got our completed table there. We have the way to find the critical path. Now we can follow the one that um, has equal um, I guess um, duration for the backwards path and we know that that's going to be the critical path so if we were to follow this one it would be k down to j because this gives us the equal um, forward and backwards path duration and then up to h and then c and a so our critical path will be uh, a to c to h to j to k oops k six to 24 days awesome now let's have a look how we went awesome we got the exact same solution as they did on the slides cool so there's a few more examples in there but i'm going to skip through those and have a look at what um, i just explained to you by finding the critical path so once you've done your forward and backwards pass you have um, numbers in your boxes and the critical in all of the boxes so the critical path is where you get the double dominoes. Um, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. 
Uh, so where both the numbers are the same. So like we did before, we could find them. So for this one, for example, it would be uh, K here, then I, and then, oh wait, sorry, not I, because that doesn't give us the double numbers. It would be K to J to H to E to B would be your critical path for that one. Awesome. This was just a practice one for you. You go all the way through. You can create your activity network for the following um, precedence tables, complete the forward and backward path to identify the critical path and the ASAP time. Pause the video, then right here, have a go at it, and I'll show you the solution now. All right, so here's the solution. Your network should look something like this with your uh, forwards and backwards path completed and you could use the forwards and backwards path to find that your critical path or your ASAP time is B, F, I, K, N, P. And if any of these any of these activities here were delayed, the whole, part, the whole um, project would be delayed. It's important to note that in each of your examples. All right, and here's going to be another example have a go at this one, um, pause the video, have a go, come back for the solution, which is this. And your network should look similar to this with your forwards and backwards giving you this um, and giving you the critical path of A, F, H, and I with the ASAP time of 12 days. Again, if this critical path was any of these activities were delayed, the whole project would be delayed. All right, this will be next video.